Um, so I'd like to welcome everybody um, to listen to this chat uh, by Jake Workington from the ADLC. Um, we're going to discuss homeschool options for fall 2020. Thank you so much for joining us, Jake. Okay, and thank you for the invitation, Gloria. And uh, yeah, so um, this is a fairly extensive topic for which I'm just going to kind of um, give a cursory glance um, and welcome questions at any point in time as we proceed. So um, first of all, just to introduce myself, I'm Jake Morganton. Um, I'm an associate principal here at the Alberta Distance Learning Center. Um, and I've been here for 22 years. And um, um, we also homeschool our children. So we have six of them, four are, have gone on and we still have two left. So that's just a quick snapshot of who I am. Um, and uh, any, uh, so, and, and I'm gonna basically, so here's kind of what I'm looking at, trying to cover here a little bit. Um, so um, ADLC's programs and ADLC teacher role and some things about ADLC and then some examples from students, as well as some ho other homeschool options and additional information. So that's kind of the overview at large. Um, any questions about the agenda? Is there anything missing there? Or, or, or any questions about it before I get started? And I see everybody's muted. So go ahead and unmute and just answer if you have any questions. Thank you, Jake. I think the agenda looks pretty good. Okay. Okay, I'll proceed and you guys can, um, don't hesitate again to interrupt at any point in time as we go through. So first off, I'll just explain a little bit about ADLC. So, um, so one of the things um, that <clears throat> we're recognized as, though this isn't a common name, but um, the Alberta Distance Learning Center is, is often considered to be a gap filler, a gap filler for schools and for students. So um, a school is unable to offer something and then we help them with that. For students, maybe they have timetable and conflicts, et cetera, and or they are not able to attend the school or whatever, and we can help fill those gaps. So, um, so that's, so we're a service provider um, and we work in partnership with schools. So we're unique in this way. So other online schools are the school. So when you sign up with an online school, that is your school. Um, with the Alberta Distance Learning Center, um, the school signs the student up with us. So there's a partnership between a school and ADLC. Um, and I'll explain a little bit further. So um, a parent that phones us and says, hey, I wanna register my child, they can't with ADLC. They have to go through some school, whether that is your local school, whether that's an online school, whether it's a school that specializes in home education or whatever, any kind of a school can register the student with ADLC. So it's a partnership model. Um, and so we likewise can, um, like we often are supplementing other people's programming. Um, and I should mention that this year, because of COVID, um, Alberta Education has, um, uh, in partnership with us, has suggest, has, we have come up with a limit that will only actually teach up to half of a student's um, courses because the concern is that um, we'll be inundated with so many um, full-time students while the school gets um, the funding to teach them and yet ADLC is doing that. So, yeah. So that's, um, that's the process for getting in. And so again, we serve, all schools in Alberta or all schools can access us. Um, 
and the avenue is to go through the school. And so that partnership can look very differently depending on the school or whatever they choose to offer. Did I hear uh, that right, Jake? So you can only, you would only teach half of the courses for a student? Yes, you did hear me correctly. And that's brand new this year. In fact, it's like maybe only a week or two old, this, um, this decision. So until now, we did teach full-time students. Um, now most, I should say on average, we teach like 1.5 courses per student. That's on average. And we have like 20,000 students. Um, but um, in the lower grades, we more commonly teach more than that. Um, and uh, so, so this is going to make a significant impact on um, enrollments and decisions and all that kind of stuff. So, so, yeah. so then families I, I'm, this year then would still have to send their kids to school part of the time? Yeah, or they can be registered in, with a home education provider or another online school um, and still access us, ADLC. Oh, okay. That's, that's oh. what I do, right? Like I'm with Vista, so it would, I can still do everything because it's its own school. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, and I'll explain even more about Vista in a little bit, but because um, that is uh, another Pembina Hills school. Um, so we work a lot with them, but any other school, just like Vista, Devon, could um, do the exact same thing um, where they access our courses. So whether it's a physical school um, or an online school or a school that caters to home education, anyway, all of those or an outreach school or whatever, they all can access ADLC. But Yes, this year we have limited it to a, just under half of a student's load. So any other questions about that? So essentially we're a supplement now and can't be the main program. So now at ADLC, we have a couple of terms that I, that I wanna go over um, just for familiarity purposes. So what most people think of when they think of ADLC is student instruction. So this is where um, our teachers are providing the instruction to the student. Um, so, and um, we like to have support from a parent or a facilitator or somebody at the other end to make sure that, um, you know, the student has somebody to, to talk to and, and somebody is there to um, encourage and that kind of thing but does not have to be part of the, uh, like doesn't have to um, educate the child in terms of, you know, explain the concepts or mark the work or any of that. That's done by our teachers. So, but we, we like to work in tandem with others. Um, so our success rate is very dependent on who's helping and how they help at the other end, if that makes sense. So, um, and then at, um, at ADLC, we have a one teacher model, which is where the, the teacher is, it is, plays a role like a classroom teacher in the sense that um, everybody is, um, they do everything. They make sure that the content is correct in the course, they mark everything, they answer questions, they, all of that, they do everything. So, and in contrast, Vista Virtual functions with a different model, and I'll explain that a little more later. But, um, so there are no tuition fees for these services. Um, and the only costs are for physical resources. And typically those costs are borne by the school. So usually the school will pay for whatever physical resources are required. So textbooks, that kind of stuff. Um, there are no charges for any of the online content um, or for teacher services. So, and then we offer grades one to 12 and we offer those in both the print and online formats. So students, um, can in many courses, not all, but in many courses, they can choose print or online. So like for grade one, there's no online, it's just print. 
Um, and, um, and then for some of our CTS, CTS options, there's only online and not print. Um, so it goes, um, it's not all courses, but most of our core courses will have both options. So in print being, um, we used to mail things back and forth and that still is possible. Um, but we highly encourage, and most people do, um, scan and uh, submit that way. Um, it's much faster um, and uh, safer. Uh, we're sh more sure to get it and so on. Um, yeah, any questions about that? So this is the main thing that people think of when they think of ADLC and what they do. Um, then, uh, so this is kind of what it looks like, can look like in various situations. So you can have a school facility, so it could be happening in a school. Now these are obviously, uh, our, um, these pictures weren't taken for COVID reasons. These are old pictures. Um, but anyway, so there, so it can happen at a school, can happen at home with a parent facilitating it, or it, it does happen alone. We prefer that doesn't happen, but it does. Um, so the, it's, it's less motivating when a student is alone. So our success rate drops when that happens. Um, and then maybe to explain what a teacher does. Um, so here it gives you a sense then of what our school is like. So, um, you know, teachers, I mean, they introduce themselves, they try and build relationships with the student. Um, I'm not sure if you can read this, maybe the print is too small, but um, so they, they use a, they, a lot of communication is one on one. So whether it's email, uh, phone, or Google uh, Meet, um, which is like Zoom that we're using here, um, that kind of thing, um, text messaging, all of those things, a lot of the communication is one on one. Uh, and then uh, teachers do the marking and then in the marking, there's a lot of feedback. So it's, it's, it's richer communication than normally would be done in the classroom. Because in the classroom, the teacher can address the whole class at once and say, hey, everybody missed this point, let me explain. Um, in our environment, um, because students are self-paced and they're not all at the same place, same time, um, so you're doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one, and so you end up reteaching inside the feedback um, quite commonly. Um, so and then, um, yeah, the teachers respond to questions like that come from students. So and they work from 8.30 to 4 um, on school days. Um, and, uh, and then our teachers work a lot with parents. Uh, probably uh, our connections are probably closer or we like them to be, certainly, um, because the parent uh, in a situation where they're at home, the parent is a very, we see as a very vital component. So we like to do a lot of communicating there too, make sure everybody's in the know what's going on. Um, and then our teachers work on their courses as well to continually moving them forward. So that's it, to give you a sense of what the core, what a teacher does. So, and then here, Devin maybe can answer or um, speak to this perhaps better than I can, being a student at Vista Virtual. But um, so this Vista Virtual is also a school of Pembina Hills and there are other online schools and, and they're all somewhat different and also somewhat the same. Um, so Vista Virtual serves grades 1 to 12, and it uses the same resources that ADLC does for the most part. I mean, teachers can tweak them, but a lot the same. Um, but their mo the Vista Virtual model is different um, in that uh, they use a team approach. So they have a teacher with a, a number of markers to assist. So their class sizes are larger. Um, and the teacher does answers a lot of the questions and markers do a lot of the marking. Um, and Vista Virtual, as other online schools, um, families register directly and they can take full programming there. So that's, that's kind of some of your main differences. Um, but I would encourage like if anybody is looking into their various options to contact 
whatever school you want to find out more information from and ask them directly what is it like etc cetera, etc cetera. because they do vary a fair bit so vista virtual for example is asynchronous so is um, adlc asynchronous meaning that students are learning at their own pace and and, and it's not done as we are doing now through zoom or google meet or whatever um, Instead, students are reading and um, maybe watching videos or whatever and and then working on ind quite independently. Um, and other some online schools emphasize the synchronous, which is like this Zoom and they teach live like this. So uh, you'll get different flavors from different schools. Any questions about that part? Hi, Jake. Yes. Um, so we, we are not in Pembina Hills. We're in Northern Gateway Regional School Division. Is there another um, online school that is in our district? You know, and, and I should know, but I don't. I'm not aware of one. Hello. Matter. Yes. S sorry, if I can interrupt with that question. Uh, Marathorpe High School is allowing the high school students 10 to 12 to do ADLC and this is why I'm listening today because I talked to the vice principal and she told me they are in sync with you guys through ADLC is how the course load's going to be but I wasn't understanding how that would look like uh, she was explaining that basically she would try to oversee it but um that uh there wouldn't be a lot of teacher assistance or guidance, supposedly, unless I specified, which I did specify. She said she could try for two out of the four subjects. So I'm a little bit confused as to how ADLC will play into the Marathorpe High School with the 10 to 12 students. And I don't know if that answers that lady's question or not. Yeah, so ADLC, yes, ADLC serves, um, it, we have a unique um, service agreement with the government. And so every school division uses us to some degree, um, basically, I guess. And, uh, and so yes, we are an option everywhere. Um, Vista Virtual is a dedicated school, and that is a Pembina Hills school. Um, and um, yeah, it's interesting to hear like that Mayor Thorpe is looking at using ADLC and I think a lot of schools are um, and the role that um, so Mayor Thorpe can choose to have as much of an involvement as they want to have and I'll explain there's a there's another option that um, I haven't got to yet um, that will explain another option that the school has um, and, and yeah I'll wait to get to there, but um, did I, does that, yeah, so the limit will, there will just be a limit on, you can't, for your student, you can't have more than half the program with ADLC. So and that's unique this year and that's, I know it's causing some concern, um, but so that's the limiting factor, but the, through our other process, which we call teacher support and I'll explain in a bit, that process allows more, um, it, it, that's unlimited, but it requires more support from the school. Um, so that's also available to Mayor Thorpe or everywhere else. Um, as far as what all the other online schools are, if you look up um, Alberta Education's website, and I didn't put a link in here, but Alberta Education has a list of all the online schools. So you can look that up um, and see who else is available as well. And, uh, and if your school division, Northern Gateway has any, um, they would probably be listed there. Okay, did that answer your question, at least partially for now? Yes, you answered my question, thank you. Okay. So um, there are, are an, a few uh, special programs. So I've kind of given you the generic view here in terms of, you know, grades one to 12, here's our courses, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we also have a few things that are, are unique, um, such as our personalized learning 
um, program, which is um, uh, for students for whom, so a grade three student, but our resources are not a good fit for that student. Um, so whether they are struggling, they maybe they're functioning, um, you know, they, they are um, struggling academically, or maybe they're advanced, or maybe they have unique needs for whatever reason that these resources in particular don't work well. Um, they, that's what the personalized learning program is for. So what happens in a personalized learning program is, um, uh, the teacher contacts the family and discusses, you know, hey, where are we at? And, and you know, maybe does uh, some quick testing as well. And um, what are the needs? What are the strengths, et cetera? And then creates programming using resources that are idea that they think are the best suited for the situation. Um, and so it, in that program, the learning is very customized for every student. So you don't, it's very rare for two students um, to have the same programming. Um, typically it's quite unique. So teachers are working harder in the sense of they're trying to cap, you know, there's probably um, a day or two spent just trying to figure out the plan for a student and the resources that are optimal. Um, then, you know, they involve the school that's partnering with us and say, hey, you know, make sure this is okay with you, make sure the family's on board, everybody's on board. And then we launch and then the teachers create assignments and so on. So it's very customized um, and it's especially suited for students who are, you know, for whom the regular program is not a good fit. Um, and then um, we have some other resources here. So this is, so these other items here that are um, uh, on the screen, um, like the Bruce Oka lesson plans. So these, so each one of these items, by the way, is quite different from the other. So I'm jumping here now. So Bruce Oka lesson plans, if you go to our website and look under um, resources for teachers, you'll find, um, the lesson plans. They won't be called Bruce Oka, but they'll be called lesson plans. And they were designed to teach um, science, social studies, and health in the Hutterite Colony Schools. The Hutterite Colony Schools teach uh, the same curriculum, but it, it is flavored for them. So you'll sense a bit of a, a flavor for their culture, um, but it, it covers the same content. It's got um, a lesson plan that can be delivered by a parent. And the idea is that it should be efficient. And if you can imagine how life is like in a colony school, um, they, a teacher can teach up to nine grades at one time. And so they need it to be efficient. Um, and likewise, in a homeschool environment, you often have a similar need. You might have a number of students. You also have all the regular um, duties of maintaining a home. And so efficiency becomes important. Anyway, those lesson plans are free to download um, and they have the answer keys in them and so on. So um, it's all available on our website. Then uh, another product we've got is called Preview Review. Um, it's available in the same location it's also available for free, and um, and it's limited to um, just grades four to nine math and LA, as well as grades seven to nine social studies and science. And um, it's intended to be a summer school program, but is used um, by homeschoolers as well to cover the essentials. So it's not the full program, but it is the the considered the big rocks. Like what are the essential learnings in that course, in that grade? Um, so, and then um, our last component, and I'll go over these a little bit more detail, but I'll kind of do it quickly. Um, but early learning resources, that was at one time we were developing a kindergarten program, which never did get launched. 
we've never been able to offer kindergarten here at ADLC, but we developed some resources and they're available uh, as well for free download. Um, so, and then real quick, just about Bruce Oka. So he was a teacher in a colony school, but um, he was uh, in Southern Alberta and, uh, and he was very thorough and excellent at creating these things. And um, we obtained those resources from him when he retired and um, and have made them available to everybody digitally at no cost so um, so he, he himself is not um, like a, a part of the Hutterite colony he was just a teacher on the colony and um, this is kind of what uh, just a brief snapshot of what the lesson plans contain um, and how they they allow for groupings because that's how colony schools often do things. They group them in grades one to three, four to six, seven to nine for science and social studies. Um, and, and basically very efficient is what it's designed to be. Um, and then this is kind of what it looks like. So here's an example of uh, two pages. Um, so here's a lesson plan and on the uh, right side is um, an example of a, 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 an assignment. And then there would be an answer key as well. Um, so, and here's more of, you know, here's an experiment in science, et cetera, for them to do. So that's the kind of thing it looks like. But again, the cost is right. You can download it for free. There's no registration. You don't have to be connected with ADLC in any way. You can just obtain this at no cost. So in the preview review, um, looks a little like this. Um, and now this is not lesson plans. These are directed at the student. And that's how most ADLC materials are. It's directed at the student, except for the lowest grades where it's directed at the parent. But um, these are um, intended for students to work on as independently as possible. Um, though we certainly encourage parental involvement and we encourage questions to come to the teachers. So now uh, for preview review, again, the resources are just there. Um, you can download them as well as the answer keys. Um, so now some of the review preview review re resources use other um, required textbooks, etc. And on the website, where you download them, you would see what is required. Math never does. So math is self-contained. But the other courses take require additional textbooks that we don't supply. Um, you have to obtain them from your school or someplace else. Um, and then just um, real quick, just about our grades one to three language arts. Um, we're, and this is just a sample. We have many, many courses that I could talk to you about. Um, but I just picked uh, these courses. Um, we are following um, a researcher at the U of A called, uh, named Dr. Giorgio. Um, and he has led some research which seems to be uh, cutting edge in the Western world in terms of success in teaching reading in schools. So his, he is not into distance education um, but he's worked with many schools across Alberta and um, his um, many schools um, in grades have for grades one to three, they hope to have, you know, between 40 to 60% um, of their students able to read at the grade three level at the end of grade three. And Dr. Giorgio has obtained 98%. So 2% don't, 98% um, do. So his success rate is phenomenal. And um, so we've worked with him somewhat. And um, he says, we can't do this at a distance. And I said, well, we'll do our best. And that's what we've been trying to do. So um, I won't get into um, the details of it, but just to kind of give you a sense of, um, so there's the name of some of the products and that's kind of what it's like. Um, so that's, that's um, kind of a snapshot of some of the unique parts that we have with ADLC. Um, does anybody have any questions about those? OK, 
Okay. Um, now here's the, um, I alluded to this earlier, but we have student instruction, as I mentioned, which is what most people think of when they think of ADLC. We also have teacher support. Now this is most, um, we usually communicate this mostly with schools. And basically, we're like a publisher to them. Here's our stuff, you run the program. Um, so like Mayor Thorpe High School, for example, could do this if they chose to. They could use all our stuff. We supply them with all the um, resources, um, answer keys, everything. We provide the digital infrastructure, everything is all there for them. It's basically a turnkey solution and, uh, and their teachers are in charge. So their teachers would do the marking, their teachers would do the communicating. It would seem like it is Mayor Thorpe's school and their program um, because all the communication is with them. So, and that's unlimited. There's no limit in how many students can be in here or how much of their program can be taken this way. So in, so that's, um, so I do not know which way Mayor Thorpe is going or whether they're doing a bit of both. They can, they can choose to do that. Um, so they could do some things where it's ADLC teachers doing it and other things where they themselves are doing it. Um, does that make sense? Okay. So, and um, that applies to any school anywhere. Like they can, any school can use our resources in Alberta um, to teach their own students. So we're, we're sort of uh, uh, making it possible that um, they can teach at a distance using the same things we do, we have. So um, now just some quick stories here. Um, we had a grade five student um, who completed, so this is a number of years ago. So, um, but Math 30 Pure, which, um, now is called Math 30-1. The grade five student completed that course, completed all the courses up to there and that course um, and scored 93% on the diploma exam. So in every other course, that student was in grade five courses, but in math, um, he was accelerated and would do like about four courses a year of math. So he moved through very quickly and uh, I don't have a clue what he did in grade six, but he was very successful in math. That kind of thing we can accommodate here at ADLC and online schools can often accommodate as well. It's more difficult in the classroom because of, well, how do you get this grade five student into the grade 12 class, et cetera, and how do they accelerate and so on. So those are just some of the advantages that you can have with us. I can see that the flip side of that would be an advantage too. You know, if a student is struggling in one subject, then, you know, they could still remain at a certain level in every other subject, but maybe in math, they, they could, could take more time if yes. they need more time. Exactly. Yeah. Now there's a limit to how slow we'll allow things to go, but yes, um, it, that is a huge advantage being able to go as slow as you need to, or as fast as you can. Um, so the timing and the pacing, so you're not pushed along or dragged be, uh, slower, right? So the timing goes with you. Um, another example of, a, of an accelerated one was um, a number of years ago, we had a, um, a, an awards night and uh, the winner of the Chemistry 30 Award winner, his, his dad came to me and said, do you, do you know the story? And I said, what story? I had no clue there. We have like 300 students who had completed chemistry 30. Like I didn't know, and I didn't teach chemistry. So I didn't know the story at all. Anyway, the father told me, he said, well, he had been away in Europe for an extended business trip. He had come back and his son had um, procrastinated in chemistry 30. And he had 48 hours left to complete half the course. And in 48 hours, he finished it, wrote the diploma and ends up being the top mark out of 300 students, which is pretty incredible. Like obviously a pretty bright student. Um, so those are kind of our shining examples, but uh, yes, there are lots of cases where we've been able to save students um, by being able to allow them to go much slower. 
So another kind of students that, that we get are the students who due to um, athletics or performance issues or, or not issues, but opportunities, they are unable to attend school as much. Um, and so we get some of those kinds of students who are traveling a lot. Um, and now obviously with COVID, we're getting a lot of those students. Um, and we also service the colony schools. So some of them, some schools use our resources as well. Um, and so here's just a quick view of that. Um, we get our travelers who go all around. Um, and then we have the students who are struggling. Um, and we have quite a few of those that uh, found the pacing or whatever conditions not to be favorable on the school. And many times um, when they come with ADLC, they have found success and it's been very encouraging. Um, so, and then this is my favorite story or stories, um, just cause I like to brag about my family. Um, so um, this is my oldest son's wedding. And uh, so he's, he um, graduated, graduated from um, us through home. We did um, parent directed, which I'm going to talk about here in the next slide. Um, parent directed um, homeschooling till grades end of grade nine and then for high school went online with a variety of different online schools um, with all of the older children. So um, he currently has his own business. Um, doing uh, painting and taping um, here in the Barhead area. He did go to university for a while, but he never did complete. He chose this route instead. Um, my oldest daughter in, in the pink dress, she's a registered nurse and a global traveler. She goes everywhere. Um, then my son at the far right, he's a pilot and um, he flies for uh, um, a fishing company, uh, fly and fishing company in northern Manitoba, and he's also studying to be a mechanic, an airplane mechanic. And then um, my daughter in the blue, she's now married as well. This picture is dated, and uh, she's a registered nurse as well. Um, and then we have two younger ones that we're still homeschooling. So, and uh, and then I'm. So I'll just kind of mention to you the, um, the homeschool parent directed option as well. So as I mentioned, that's what we did for grades one to nine. And, um, and that's where a parent designs and implements their own program. So there's a fair bit of flexibility in Alberta for doing this. So parents can choose their own resources and then um, implement them, evaluate them and so on. Um, the goals that they need to follow are very broad, much more broad than teachers in the classroom have. So it uh, lends to a lot of flexibility, a lot of choice, um, which can be challenging as well. So, and I've got a link there to some resource suggestions. So that's a website that I've made um, and it's dated. Um, so some of the links won't work. I haven't kept it up as much as I should, but there's just some suggestions. It's definitely not uh, saying these are the best, but it is suggesting that these are some good ideas to start with um, if, you're, if a parent is choosing this route. So now, um, great in high school, the, the challenge with this route is that you don't get credits. Um, so a lot of people, or at least we chose to go online in high school because then you can get credits. Grades one to nine, there are no credits. So there's more flexibility and it's, um, it doesn't have the same repercussions. So um, with, and, go ahead. Sorry. So those students in grades uh, 10 to 12, they need those credits in order to go on to uh, post-secondary education? It makes it e easier to, get, well, 
maybe that's even a bit of a debate, but um, there are students who homeschool all the way through grade 12, and but then they have to prepare a portfolio. And so there's a bit more work for them to do to demonstrate to the post-secondary institution that they are ready to be, that they're eligible for admission. Um, so because they don't have marks to go by. Um, there are some post-secondary institutions who um, actively recruit homeschool students. So because they feel that it, um, the ones that they have obtained, they felt were um, um, of excellent quality, essentially. They said, hey, we want to actively recruit those students. Um, and there are other post-secondary institutions who are less willing to take those on. So it depends on which one you want to go to. Um, so it may be easier and it may not. Um, but the credits route is very recognizable. Um, but that being said, if your marks are too low, the credit route um, is challenging to get into post-secondary because they say your marks are too low, others are going to beat you um, in uh, and so on. So there's pros and cons both ways. Um, we chose to go the credit route. And I think a lot of parents choose that who homeschool, they choose the credit route and then, and then they do that through the online school. Does that make sense, Gloria? It, it does. Thank you. Um, I wonder if you noticed that there was another question from Carrie and John Minchin. Um, no, I can't see it. Okay. Their question was what happens with ADLC students after this school year? Now, um, Carrie, maybe, maybe you could fill us in on what school year that is. Um, are you, are you finishing, finishing high school or, uh, um, you know, or as, are they referring to the fact that ADLC is not going to continue operating or, cause I would like to know more about that. What does that mean for, for ADLC students and other schools that use their resources? How does that go forward from here? That's, that's the million dollar question, Devin. Um, and I can't answer what next year will look like. Um, so because ADLC, uh, the current uh, situation is that um, ADLC will be closed one year from now. So how that will look, I don't know. Um, and the province is saying, Alberta Education is saying that there are other online schools that can carry the burden. Uh, can fulfill the, the role. So um, we will see how things develop. Um, I know Pemina Hills is trying to invest a lot of effort into Vista Virtual School at this point to, to try and shoulder as much as possible there. Um, on top of that, you've got all this, um, this COVID situation and estimates are like Edmonton and Calgary are both estimating in the 25 to 30 percent range of uh, families choosing to not have their students attend school. And so it'll be, it, yeah, what next year looks like, I really don't know. But um, our option will be gone and uh, uh, schools will have to work with other schools. And um, currently the way it looks is they would, there would have to be an agreement, you know, where they, one school has to pay the other for services, et cetera. So um, how that'll look, I'm not entirely certain. I'm not sure that that's going to be the best option, Jake. You know, would, you know <laughs> if our school wants to work with White Court School, then I guess our students have to travel then. They can't work online. I, I wouldn't expect that these schools would have, would have a program developed to share. Yeah, and more often it would probably be an online school that would be working in tandem. Let's say Marathorpe joins up, let's say Vista Virtual, or there are many others that could be picked. Um, you know, they work with them to uh, create programming. But um, fun sharing of funding would be one of the hurdles to cross, like how, who gets paid, how much, etc. Um, 
So there are some challenges. With ADLC, we're funded by Alberta Education, so basically for free to everybody else. So it's a very different model. So um, we anticipate that there will be some challenges going forward, um, but I guess that remains to be seen how that all works out. Um, yeah, did that, um, it may not have answered your question, but it's probably about as good as I've got. Uh, yeah. uh, Carrie and John have just indicated that they have no microphone. And so uh, I'll check back with you, Jake, if it didn't, didn't answer the question. Oh, okay, wonderful, wonderful. So yes, if they, yeah, if you can, I can't see the chat um, uh, easily. So if you can, yeah, if you can just read out their questions, that would be wonderful. So um, yeah, back to the, the homeschool thing. So in a homeschool situation um, where it's parent directed, um, the school has to, that's whatever school you register with and um, yeah, or school or school division or school authority, they have, to, they have three th main things there. Um, they approve the parent's education plan and they provide two evaluations throughout the year. Um, and then uh, the third thing, which I didn't put in the bullet here, is they, um, they handle the funding. So there's a certain amount of funding. It's $850 this year is available to parents to purchase resources so they can buy textbooks, those kinds of things. Um, so that's, that's the role of a school. So it's a very minimal role um, and, uh, and the lion's share of the weight rests with the parent. Um, but this kind of thing um, can be quite successful so uh, based on research um, uh, on homeschooling where parents are choosing what they teach and how they teach and so on, um, the results are quite favorable. Uh, they do as well um, uh, or better in many of the areas um, academically and so on. So there's, so that's, that's it in a quick nutshell. Um, so one of the one of the ways that I tend to phrase um, parent directed homeschooling is that it works, but it's work. So it, it doesn't happen by itself. There's a lot of effort needed. So, um, but it can be quite successful. And uh, and then I've got just a link there, um, which is probably not active in a video. Um, but uh, you uh, can probably read it and kind of capture it. But uh, I've got a website that I've made to deal with questions around homeschooling and so on. It's mostly to do with questions around um, parent-directed homeschooling um, that you're welcome to look at. Um, and then when it comes to online schooling, that's where I would encourage people to contact the schools themselves. And again, the website I didn't put on here, but ADA, um, Alberta Education has a website listing all the online schools. And the way they function is, is each one is different and they are changing. So I would encourage, you know, if you're looking for, uh, you know, other alternatives, by all means, look at those um, two places. And that's, that's it. Jim, Any... Can I ask, um, so, say we send our kids back to school now and we have another uh, outbreak and um, so now our students are coming home again um, can a student be enrolled with adlc part way through the year to take a class or two it would still have to happen through the school through our own school right yes that could happen yes it could yes we take registrations right up until march um so students can register um, till then, as long as we have capacity. So once our teacher loads are full, um, and we'll be working hard to try and balance that out, like we don't wanna have one teacher full and another one have, having lots of capacity, we'll try and balance that all out um, so that when we reach a full mark, we are full right across. Um, 
but when that happens, then there be, then we move to waiting lists. So okay. then you put your name on a waiting list to try and get in as soon as somebody else is done. Okay. Yeah. And just to recap, they could my my student could only take half of his classes with you. He That's would still right. depend on his school to provide the other half of his classes. That's right. And the his school could be another online school. It could be a, a parent directed program through a homeschool um, process. So um, but if, if that were the case, you know, if, if I wanted to homeschool, I can't start that in the middle of the year, can I? Yeah, uh, you'd have to check with whatever authority you're working with. But it, yeah. um, commonly, it gets more difficult after September. Mm -hmm. That's, that's for sure. In terms of schools are reluctant to um, have somebody n new to the homeschool and join them then. I know uh, Vista has stopped doing continuous intake throughout the year because of the demand they got when this all started. So the, I know that there is quite a few of them now that don't want to take on new students after September. Yeah, yeah. And I know that even now there are some online schools that have stopped the, or, or have paused, I guess. They've paused their registrations now because they're swamped. So this year will be unique in many ways. So ideally, if you decided to do a blend of homeschooling, so like as a parent, you decide to teach, let's say science and social studies yourself, and you have ADLC teach um, math and language arts, um, you can set that up um, earlier in the year, a lot easier than later. Any other questions? I just wanted to share, I've been doing lots of calling around and research myself, and I know that Okotoks, um, they're for grade 10 to 12, their online and print is paused, as you were saying, um, but there is room at North Star, and Vista Learning is only for those that want to do online. There's no print base like with textbooks. So just in case anybody, in case that helps anybody out for grade 10 and 12. Grade 10 to 12. Okay, wonderful. Thanks for the update. Yes. And there are, yeah, and um, I'm sure that story will keep changing as we move through September. Um, I think there are also parents, I know in the Barhead area, there's a Facebook group of all uh, of parents that are um, kind of uh, trying to figure this out together. So you have those kind of things happening as well. So it'll be a very interesting year. That's for sure. Um, I'd just like to let you know, Jake, I don't know whether you have students that are trying to access online but have um, problems with internet access. Um, a lot of the libraries, the public libraries, have Wi-Fi hubs for loan. So if you have a student maybe come to you that has no internet, um, you might direct them to the public library. That is very interesting and helpful to know. Yeah. Um, thanks for sharing that, Gloria. I did not know that. Well, I don't see any more questions here, Jake. Is there anything else you wanted to add today? I'm um, just, you're, people are welcome to contact myself. Um, I didn't put my contact information, but um, if you, call ADLC, um, the number is 1-866-774-5333 and extension 5297 is my number, 5297, um, or just call ADLC. If you go to the ADLC website, you'll find all the contact information, adlc.ca, um, and I welcome questions at any time. Great. Thank you so much for that, Jake. Um, Devin, can you maybe just Sorry. put that in the chat? The phone number? Yeah. The phone number? Yes. And do, do you want me to repeat it? Please. <laughs> Please. 1-866-774-5333. Okay. 
And then my extension is 5297. You're also welcome to talk to others here at ADLC. Um, they're all very helpful. Well, that was wonderful. Thank you so much, Jake. I think that our patrons will get a lot of useful information here. Okay. Well, and thank you for the invitation, Gloria, and, and the additional information as well. No problem. Uh, and if you, um, you know, if you can think of any way that we can partner with you to get information out, we're always happy to do that. Call okay. upon us. Okay. You've been most kind. Thank you. Take care. Thank you so much. Okay. You too.